<laughs> so, we're really going to do this? We are, and it's going to be amazing. Imagine waking up every day and helping people transform their lives all over the world. But I mean, this is a giant step, Micah. I mean, there's a recession happening right now. We can do it. We've worked really hard, and people need it right now. Okay. I mean, let's do this. Let's do it. Monday seems like the perfect time to start that plan. I just, I've just been real busy. Again, I'm trying to save the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Diana, I have some amazing news. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. What is it? We sold one plan. We sold a plan? We're there now. I mean, like we've arrived. We have arrived. We're at the pinnacle. So we sold a plan. I mean, so basically I shouldn't have to do anything anymore. I can stop writing blogs and we can probably stop marketing. I think I'm going to just go not pay the bills and get back to my video game. Yeah, I mean, we had one successful day, so we should have a successful business for years to come. Years to come? Awesome, I can't believe it. Let's do it. We did it. All right, we're there. Nice. <laughs> here would not result in a successful business. And I can actually guarantee that if this is how we had run HitchBit, we would not be about to celebrate nine years of being in business. We would not be in 73 countries with our online training clients. We would not have had the opportunity to open two gym locations in the Kansas City area. And we would not have helped our clients lose over 300,000 pounds of fat. <laughs> So just keep that in mind, and I'm going to share a little bit about how we did get to where we are today. And it all started with, you guessed it, some giant steps. So it was 2008, and I was living in San Antonio, Texas, and MySpace was the most popular social media of the day. Was anybody on MySpace? You guys remember MySpace? <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> So I get this message one day from this guy named Hitch, and it says, you rock like Fraggle Rock. <laughs> now I wasn't in the habit of responding to random guys that wrote to me on MySpace, but there was something about this message that intrigued me and it made me laugh. I really liked Fraggle Rock. So I responded and I struck up a friendship with this Hitch guy, who I later learned his name was Micah, and he lived in Kansas City. Fast forward a few months, and Micah and I were both going to be attending the Olympia, which is a big fitness and bodybuilding event in Las Vegas. We decided that we should meet. We had chatted a little bit beforehand, but it wasn't baby baby talk. It was really more just discovering that we had similar passions within the fitness industry, and that we both had a common interest in helping people change their lives. Now before we went, I was single, 
happy to be so. Uh, I was a lot of fun things happening for me in San Antonio. I had had the opportunity that entire summer to work with and train a guy that some of you may know. His name was Priest Holmes. So I was, <laughs> yeah, you guys know him. Uh, he was, so that was it. Was a lot of fun. We were having I was having a good time there. But um, Michael was also single, not interested in anything serious, as he was working on the foundation for a new business idea that he had. So we meet at the expo, and within a couple of minutes, I knew that I had just met the man that God intended specifically for me. It was as though we had been friends for a lifetime. We both agreed as we parted ways at the airport that this was the real deal, and that we were going to make this relationship work. So within two months, I had sold my car, I left everything that I was doing in Texas, and I moved to Kansas City to live in an attic. <laughs> it's broke. <laughs> <laughs> that was giant step number one. But in my spirit, I knew that it was God's plan for me and I didn't hesitate. Within three months, we were ready for giant step number two. We were going to launch this new business called Hitch Fit. We would provide online personal training to people who couldn't come and work with us in person. We would put together their workouts and their nutrition and they could correspond with us via email throughout the whole process so that we could help them with their transformation journey. We didn't have much money. We didn't have hardly any money. <laughs> but we had a friend who we shared our idea with. He thought it was a good idea. Online personal training was not something really anybody had heard of at that point in time. So he loaned us a couple thousand dollars so that we could get our website up and running and so that we could purchase uh, hard copies of the book and DVD that, that came with those first original plans. Giant step number three came about six months later. Mike and I were personal training at a studio gym that was not our own and the opportunity for us to take over the space came up and we said yes. But there was just one little thing, money. We didn't have any. So we prayed about it, and Micah did some mathematical calculations, and he came to the conclusion that we would need $12,000 to flip this gym and turn it into our own. I didn't have $12,000, did you? No. So God provided the answer within actually about a 24 hour period of time. Micah went to the gym, he excitedly told one of his clients about the opportunity. Client, who was someone who believed in us and believed in what we were doing, says, well, how much money do you need? Micah says, we need $12,000. The client says, well, would it be helpful if I bought $12,000 worth of personal training and you and Diana could just train it off? We said, yes, that would be very helpful. <laughs> By the end of that day, we had $12,000 in our bank account, and it took us three days to get everything needed and turn that gym into the first Hitch Fit gym. And that was July of 2009. So these were all giant steps for us. Me moving to a new city where I didn't know anybody, I had never been here. I really thought it would just be like a bunch of fields and farms and cows. I did. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, you know, we put all of our eggs into the basket of not one, but two businesses within a six month time frame in the heart of a recession. So what was the key to us taking those steps and not being fearful of the unknown? Jesus. Praying, yeah. That. The answer is we believed. We believed that we would be successful. Now we knew we would make mistakes and we figured we'd probably make a lot of them and we were right. But we also knew that we would learn from those mistakes we would grow from those mistakes and that they would make us stronger for whatever came up in the future. 
We sincerely believed that we could help people transform their lives. We were certain of that. And we also believed that no matter what obstacle or challenge came up, we would find a way around it, over it, or through it. Was there fear? Yes. But fear is not always a negative thing. There is fear that is paralyzing, that will prevent you from taking a leap of faith, that will hold you back from tapping into your true potential. That type of fear can be debilitating to your life, to your health, to your career, to your business, to your ultimate success. But there is another type of fear, and it is a healthy fear. The fear of missing out on your true potential, missing out on being your best and doing your best, and that is the type of fear that can propel you forward. So the first step to believing, so you can take a giant step in your life, is what I call shifting fears. So how do we do that? Have you ever paid attention to the chatter that goes on in your mind? You can learn a lot about yourself and about why your life is the way that it is if you just tune in. And if you find that it's a negative stream, that you're telling yourself you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you don't have what it takes, blah, 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 you need to change the channel and you need to shift the gear. There are a lot of things in this world that we do not have control over, but there is one thing that we do have control that we can focus and that we can direct and that's our mind it takes intentionality it takes discipline and it takes consistency it takes capturing the negative thoughts and calling them out for the lies that they are and replacing the lies with truth because the truth is that you are good enough you are strong enough you have everything you need to achieve, and you have exactly what it takes to succeed. Ask yourself a new question. Instead of saying, what if I fail? Ask yourself, what if I succeed? How does life look different if you shift your fears and start being more fearful of not fulfilling your purpose than you are of failing? I can tell you that it changes everything. So you shift your fears, you believe in yourself, and you take a giant step. But here's the thing, the giant step is just the first step. The journey doesn't stop there. So back in 2004, I was living my dream as a fitness director for Norwegian Cruise Lines. And despite this being one of the most amazing experiences of my life, and being surrounded by some really incredible people, I was lonely on that cruise ship. And the loneliness led to emotional eating, binge eating, in my cabin at night. And it turned into every night and I started to gain weight. And for me, it was a lot of weight. Now, I blamed it on my age. I blamed it on my metabolism. I said, I don't know what's going on. But I knew. And I knew that the secret behaviors that I was engaging in at night were sabotaging my body, my health, my dreams, and my goals. There was one day on the ship that I summoned up the courage to step on the scale. I looked down and I saw it soaring up to a number I had never seen before. When it hit 175, I hopped off quickly. I was terrified. What was I doing to myself? 
I felt out of control. I felt like this behavior owned me. But what could I do? And how could I change? And what if I tried and failed? When my contract ended, I hadn't seen some of my family for a year. When I saw my little sister for the first time, her jaw dropped. She didn't say anything. The last thing that she would want to do would be to make me feel bad, you know, or hurt my feelings. But I could see the shock all over her face. It was after the ship that I moved to Texas. And it was July 5th, 2005 that I was finally ready to take a giant step for my help. I was working as a personal trainer at a gym there. And after celebrating the 4th of July with beer and with a McDonald's caramel sundae, I went into the gym the next day feeling bloated, feeling lethargic, and to be honest, I felt like a fraud. Here I am trying to teach people about being healthy and this is what I'm doing in my personal life. A friend came up to me that day and he said, hey Diana, I heard you were interested in doing fitness competitions. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I didn't have an answer to that question. It was like a light bulb went off in my head. I had an aha moment. I was finally done making excuses. I was finally at a point where I was more fearful of not fulfilling my purpose and my dreams and my destiny than I was of anything else. It was time for my giant step and that was my independence day. And I didn't procrastinate. I signed up for a fitness show that day that was several months out so I would have enough time to prepare. I started changing my eating and exercise habits that day. I started researching and figuring out what I had to do to be successful in this new world that day. That was the giant step that changed the trajectory of my entire life. It's what led me to Micah. It's what led me to Kansas City. It's what led me to hitch fit. But the journey didn't stop there. Regardless of if we're talking about your business or your health, your writing and speaking careers, your relationships, the giant step is just the first step. And it's what comes after the giant step that is going to determine your ultimate success. And what comes after the giant step are the choice by choice, day by day, baby steps. And the baby steps are not as glamorous and they're not as fun. It's the daily discipline of making a healthy eating choice, or going and getting a workout. It's the consistent practice of paying your bills on time, Branding and marketing your business and staying true to your message and mission day in and day out. The baby steps take patience. And the baby steps take time. And there are days that you will be so frustrated with the baby steps. And you will think nothing is happening. But it is. And it's those baby steps that will culminate over time if you do not give up, that will ultimately lead to your success. Thinking back to that little skit, it was a giant step for Mike and I to launch our business and to start Hitch Fit. But paying the bills on time, selling one plan, marketing and putting things up on the blog. Those are giant steps. Those were things that we announced on Facebook or had big celebrations over. But those were the baby steps that we had to take in order to grow our business and make it strong. I mean, this all applies even to relationships. It was a giant step for me to move to Kansas City 
to be with this man that I knew God meant for me. That lived in an attic. That lived in an attic. <laughs> but a strong, healthy marriage has been baby steps. Day by day, communicating with each other and caring for each other. And most important, leaning on our faith in Jesus to bind us together. When I went through my personal transformation, I had 50 pounds to lose. It didn't happen fast. It didn't happen overnight. There were no shortcuts. And for the most part, it was not glamorous. The giant step was committing to that dream. The giant step was shifting my fears, believing in myself, and deciding that I had no more excuses. But the success, the victories, magazines, and even two world championships, you only got one. <laughs> Those all came as a result of the daily baby steps. It was one choice at a time. It was one meal at a time. It was one workout at a time. And through that daily discipline, I gained a freedom in my life that I had never known. It's the ultimate reason for what I consider success. And it's ultimately why I'm able to stand up here and share with you a little bit about fitness, about health, about business, and heck, I'll even throw in some relationship advice. <laughs> so, it's always right. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. So I hope that all of you here today, whether it was today at the workshops or this evening, We've got a couple more amazing speakers coming up. I hope that you have your own aha moment. I hope that you shift your fears and believe in yourself and are ready for a giant step. And I say take it. But then my challenge is to you to commit to those daily baby steps that are ultimately going to lead to your success and ultimately going to lead to your best life. So I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you to Marquita. We love you. And we're so grateful for the opportunity to be here and share at your event. And God bless. Let's give them a round of applause. Now I will tell you, their story only matters to people who try to lose weight and work out.